Hello, I'm Father Louis Skirty with Friends of the Word, the Weekday Word, and my guest today once again is Chief Robert Rocco of North Haven Police Department. Welcome, Bob. Thank you. Um, we've been working together for several years, and I think the first time we actually worked together was that first 9-11 memorial mass that we did at yes, the chapel. Yes, that's correct. Um, what we started years ago after the original 9-11 uh, attacks, we, uh, that year we had services, of course, but the year after, when it was almost approaching the anniversary, I decided to work with the community uh, the communities around William Patterson University, William Patterson is in Wayne, and the towns around it that touch William Patterson are Haldon, North Haldon, and Wayne. It's in the Passaic County, so we often uh, invited the Passaic County Sheriff's Office to be involved as well, and some other um, public servant groups, SERD and the EMTs. And the, the thought of it was, um, we have to, of course, remember the victims and families of 9-11 always. Uh, but what about those first responders? And what about the responders who go in every day for us? Not the original 9-11, but every day. Uh, our recent mass at Annunciation Church, where I'm assisting, uh, focused on that. Uh, the gospel we use from, is a selection from the Gospel of John. And Bob and I are going to maybe share about how we got involved in, in planning it and what participation uh, each of us had in planning the event. But I, I want to just use this as our opening statement, the Word of God. From the Gospel of John, Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. That was the theme of the most recent homily for 9-11, 9-11-14. But it's such a challenge for us in this world of temptation and terrorism and violence to constantly be loving, especially those that are hurting us. So let's put that over here, and that's going to be the subtext. But let's explain to our audience how we, we originally... Do you remember how we originally started getting yes, together? Yes, uh, I remember... You were playing the mass, and I believe you reached out to Mayor George for some assistance. Right. And uh, we, we both said that with a smile yeah. because <laughs> Randy George, Mayor of North Haven, uh, is like, he. What, what does he say? When Father Luke calls, no matter what he asks, I say yes. I wish more of you were like that, <laughs> by the way. But he and he really does. He does. Yes. One, one year we needed a tent. Perfect. One year we needed a tent and chairs. Uh, no matter what we we needed he always supplied us that's right and he always attended the masses yes so but uh, yes that's when we started getting together with that first mass that you had at the William Patterson um, uh, chapel and uh, I just thought it was a terrific service and uh, very well organized at that point and I enjoyed going so I've made sure I there I've been every year yeah every year. It's, it's great and 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 explain to our audience maybe even to me what what do you think is the reaction of the actual people who are being honored? The what we call the public servants, that's police, firemen, uh, EMTs, CERT, and, and those. What do you think from it from the inside? You know, what well, do you think? I, I think they're appreciative. Um, I know I, it hits home with me because not that I was there, but we did have several officers mm. from the North Haven Police Department that went over to New York, and they were there for a couple months. Uh, on and off, of course, right. not steady, but uh, it's different because you are talking about the first responders. It's not just the victims who we also acknowledge, but you are talking about the first responders and their, the role they played and the sacrifices they made. We also lost many, many hundreds of firemen, police officers, and EMTs. Mm. The purpose of the honoring is not only to honor those who originally were the um, first responders, but the first responders every day. What are some of the interesting stories that you may share with us? And I say you may, if they're confidential, obviously you're not going to share them, but about every day being a policeman. I think over the years it's just the way you look at things differently now than, than you did before, you know, not to go into exact instances, but uh, it's just the way you look at things differently. And, of course, it changes over the years that you're on. 
longer. You know, sometimes you're more sympathetic with the offenders. Mm -hmm. You know, you realize why things happen, not that they're right, but you realize why they happen, and you're more sympathetic. And other times you're like, what is this person thinking about? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so it's just the different views that change over the years. And uh, some, I didn't use any comedy this particular uh, last 9-11. Uh, Sometimes I just use a personal experience of being stopped by a, by a policeman and so on and so forth. Not, uh, not that I get stopped. Yeah, right, not me. I mean, especially not in North Hilden. <laughs> but, um, it, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a terrifying experience. I mean, if they think you went through a red light or if they, you know, they, say you think, they think you made a wrong turn and this and that. And, you know, it's a terrifying experience for the, the uh, what can I say, the, the layperson. Yes. In that person, in that role, I'm a layperson. But uh, they generally come over to the car with a great and have no idea who's in the car with a great deal of respect, and they're they're awesome looking. I mean, you're just afraid. But um, how do you educate your men and women to do that? To, to be polite, but yet be awesome, uh, be people of authority, but yet be people who respect people. Well, it's part of the training, right from the police academy. Uh, and then also through department training. You're taught to be compassionate, but also you have to stand your ground and be firm. You know, you're dealing with an offender. And to try and deal with the person on their level, you know, so they understand where you're coming from and you understand where they're coming from. Good. I'm glad you said that piece about on their level. Tell the audience how we should, the, the, the layperson, the person in the car who stopped or who's being... Um, warned by a, a siren, how should we react? Because so often, I mean, I, I'm not to interrupt you again, so often on, on Facebook especially, you see terrible reactions of, of, from the public to the police officers, and I hate to say it, not hate to say it, but they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. If you went through a red light, if you're speeding, they're supposed to stop you. And yet there's such a, often I think it's the fear and aggression that comes out well, n nobody likes to get stopped or pulled over for any Agree violation. With that. But w when they are pulled over, they should just cooperate with the police officer. Um, you have to understand police officer's situation. He doesn't know what he's walking up onto, mm. you know. And usually, you get a chance to explain your side of the story, whatever occurred. And if you're not happy with the fact, if you got a ticket, you can always have your day in court. The worst thing you can do is argue with the police officer. In a, in, on the street at the stop. Why? Because it's Why? only going to get him more aggravated, and if you see other violations that maybe would have given somebody a break on, chances are you're going to get the extra tickets. Mm, okay. Uh, so if you're cooperative on the roadway, you always have your day in court to plead your side of the case. That's interesting. Don't get into an argument, an altercation with the person who stops you. Correct. That, that Correct. makes a lot of sense. But I guess, again, it's, it's a combination of fear and aggression that comes out. And, and the self-righteousness there. I didn't do that, you know. Right. And with today's video age... Um, <laughs> Everything's being taped. We have cameras that we're taping, and I know there's apps on cell phones where they can also tape uh, police officers when right. they to stop. That has to make it very self-conscious. Yes. Yes. Something now, we have to be very aware of. Uh, are those cameras on all the police cars? Uh, we currently have three, and we're installing the rest as we get new vehicles. That's great. And so when the policeman does stop someone, he or she is being videoed as to how the interaction takes place. Correct. Right. Great. Yes. That, that's important. And I think for, for my part, I've learned <laughs> to keep at my fingertips in my glove box uh, my license. No, not my license. That's in my wallet. My uh, registration and my insurance card. <laughs> Makes things easier. <laughs> because sometimes I could remember the first time I ever got stopped. I had papers fly, oh, and, you know, now I'm nervous. I don't know if I was appreciated or not, but, but I was nervous, wreck. I don't know what I did. It was, I think the officer was right. I think I made a wrong turn, but, you know, he, he dealt with me gently because he knew I was a nervous wreck. Um, and things kept flying, and I'm, I'm thinking, you know, you're creating a distraction, and you're making it look like you don't have the paperwork. And it, that's exactly what I was feeling, and I felt guilty, but I, I had the paperwork somewhere. I found it eventually. Well, that happens many times, and we understand that, that people are nervous when they're pulled over. That's good. And sometimes they just can't locate it. It might be right in their hand. Sometimes it's yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm looking for. You, right know, there, you know, that has yeah. happened, too. That, yes. that piece, not yes. that, but that piece. Yes, right. yes. Right. I got to tell you a story. This happened years ago. I was a child, driving as a child. Let me know old enough to drive. Uh, I was going to Seton Hall, and I was in the middle of Newark, and, you know, no GPS, 
and I don't read maps, so I'm doing by instinct and directions. And, and I'm all in all this traffic in the middle of Market and Broad, and I, I didn't know where to go, but I knew I had to go that way, so I make a left turn, and of course, it was, do not make a left turn. And there's a policeman there, and there's traffic. Oh, he pulls me over. And he says, um, oh, I, you, know, you know, I was a priest, and I'll tell you why I remember that. Uh, he, he comes over to me and says, sir, you know, you, I, I says, you know, I have to go to Seton Hall. I, I knew, it was the only way I knew how to get there. He says, uh, license registration gave him that. He says, um, why are you going to see? No, I said, well, I'm a priest. I'm taking classes there. He says, you're a priest. Mm. He says, you watch over souls, right? I said, yes, I hope so. He says, well, I watch over bodies. I'm letting you ride for this one. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, I said. Thank you, Jesus. Any other closing words for our audience? That's all I have for now. Great. The, and you notice that the, the words we started with and end with are... Jesus' words of love. Um, we have to practice that as police, as lay people, as people who are being stopped and people who are who need to stop others. Um, if we love and respect each other as, as human beings, it's so important. Um, and there's always going to be a little bit of aggression, a little bit of anger. Take a deep breath. We, we need to deal with each other as dignified human beings made in the image of God. Thank you. This has been Father Louis Skirty with Chief Bracco on Friends of the Word. God bless you.